This is Fan Jiang from Xilin Software and AI Technical Marketing. Today, I will briefly introduce the utilization of Mighty's AI tools. Xilinx officially released the Mighty's AI version 1.3 on December 17, 2020, which is considered as a full stack software tool chain dedicated for the development and optimization of deep learning algorithms on unified Xilinx platforms. User could simply find it on the GitHub page with the link on the screen. Now here we start. To reduce the dependencies of operating systems and third-party libraries, the version 1.3 of Mighty's AI still applies the Docker image format for the release. In addition, to adapt to the working habits of software developers, only common line mode is supported. User could simply use git clone command to pull the repository from GitHub in Linux environments. As the VTCI runtime is fully open sourced in this 1.3 version, the clone progress will take about 10 minutes that a little bit longer than the previous release. Okay, now it's finished. Let's enter the YDCI folder. Okay. If it's a CPU server, we could directly use this Docker run dot sh script to enter the uh, cpu docker container and uh, if it's a gpu server we need to enter the setup and docker and use this docker build script to build up the gpu docker image and here we can just simply use Okay, it's done now. The processing time may vary from 20 minutes to several hours, which is um, depend on the internet and local environment. So now we could go back to the Vitis AI folder and use the Docker run script to start the Docker container. Okay, um, we have a serious models in our model zoo that you could choose from to try out the body side tools. And in this video, I will take the ResNet 15 network under the TensorFlow 2 framework as example, because the TF2 framework support is a new feature in this Windows 3 release. And in each model repo, You will find a YAML file which contains the detailed information and the download links of the model. And here we could simply use the wget command to download it. Okay, it's finished, it's pretty quick. And now we are in the Docker container and for different framework, we will have different kind of environment to support. 
And you could simply use the kind of EMV list to see what we have here. And because here we will use the TensorFlow 2 as example, so we need to activate the TensorFlow 2 count environment. Okay. So this is the zip file we have downloaded. And when we extract this model, we will have this folder here. So when we enter this model folder, we have a readme file, which you could refer to to do the model. The first step is the environment preparation. Even with the same framework, there could be some version differentiations in terms of the different libraries. And each model will have um, a TXT file. This one? Yeah, we'll have a TXT file contains the, um, the unique requirement of this model. And we could simply use the pipe install Use this one to get it installed. Okay, then and the second step will be the data set preparation. Okay. As most of the models within the model zoo are trained with public data sets that need to be downloaded from third party websites. So in this demo, we will use some pre-downloaded images to show the procedure. Okay. And so in this demo, all the data has been downloaded and put in this data folder. And we could use this quantization script to start the quantization. So let's have a look at this script. Okay. So this is the Python file we use to the quantization. And there are some arguments we need to um, put after it. First is the model, right? Uh, this .h5 file is the TensorFlow2 models, which has been put under this float folder. And the quantization is true. This is the output directory. And the evaluation is true as well, because we need to evaluate the accuracies after the quantization. And there will be the, the path of the data, okay? Uh, label offset one, and we use GPUs number zero, okay? And we could simply run the script to start the quantization. Okay, then, and you will find the quantized models under this quantization results. So this quantized .h5 file is the, the model generated. So the next step, we will use the, this compile script to compile the model. Let's have a look what we have in this script. And um, the VSC TensorFlow 2 is the, the keyword we use here. Um, the VI stands for what is AI, C stands for the compiler, and TensorFlow 2 is the framework. And after it, we will have the quantized models and the output paths, the model name, and the architecture. And this is the architecture. It's the actual JSON file, which could be found after the DPU integration. So the compiler here, the compiled model will be hardware dependent. Okay. So when we start the compilation, and now the compiler will first 
convert the models from the TensorFlow 2 framework to the X model format. X model is the um, format of the Slalinx inter representation. And then it will compile from the X model to DPU instructions. Okay, finished. And we could find the compilation results. Here, under the compilation results, your target boards and the net name, um, this RedNet50.x model is the one we're going to use for further deployment. And there are two ways to do the further deployment. The first one is you could simply copy this X model plus the deployment source code, the make file, everything to the board, and to do the cross compile on board. And the second choice is you could do everything on the server. So in this video, I will show you how to do this cross compile on the server side. And that's everything worked in the Docker container. So we can type execute to exit the Docker. To do the cross compile, you could simply refer to the readme files in demo, YDC library. And there will be a step-by-step -step guide to show how to do this cross-compile on the server side. Okay, so there are two files we need to download it first. The first one is this SDK for 2020.2 version, and then this YCI uh, tarball. This contains the sysroot of the YCI. Okay, um, so we will just follow this instruction here. The first step is to download this one. It's finished. <clears throat> to execute the script, to install the, the SDK. Here we could modify the target directory to to our card folder. Um, let's create a new one, compile Linux. The setup finished now. So we could see The SDK has been installed in this uh, Panalinux SDK folder. And then we could use cells, environments. Right. So the next step is we need to download the, the sysroot of YTC AI. Still, we will refer to the, the readme files in this demo YCI to find the download link. The 
this one. Use debugat. Finished, and then we could extract. this tarball to the panel Linux sysroot right it's finished so all the relevant headers the libraries have been have been set up well and we could go to the um, demo YCI and we could choose any samples inside for example the rest FT which belongs to this classification repo and we simply use this build script to generate the bin file okay it's finished so we could see the binary files generated here. So all the users need to do is copy this executable binary files and the X models and the inference images to the target platforms for inference. Okay, so that's the end of this introduction. For further questions, it's more than welcome to leave your comments on our Xilinx forum. Okay, so thank you for watching. Appreciate it a lot. See you. Bye.